sorry, I was so late. I, I, I live in the city and I work in the city. I forgot how long it takes to get out to the country and I forgot my name. <laughs> Charlie, very difficult. Uh, so, my name's Kate Drummond and I'm a neurosurgeon at the Royal Melbourne Hospital. I've got my little list of things to do here. So, I work at the Royal Melbourne Hospital and at Melbourne University. Uh, and you might come across me doing clinical work on the wards or in the operating theatre. You might come across me in the brain tumor laboratory. You might come across me teaching medical students or supervising my PhD students. So, I do a, a wide range of types of types of work. I do a little bit of dog neurosurgery at the vet school out at Werribee, so I get to do lots of fun stuff. You might come across me in Africa teaching there as well. Um, explain my specialty. My specialty is the most interesting specialty in the universe. <laughs> and you know, we're talking about the cognitive specialties here. I am the cognitive specialty. I mean, it's, it is the brain. Um, but actually, neurosurgery is, is a, very, a varied specialty. Uh, because we deal with lots of different things. Uh, so there's obviously the brain surgery, but that's broken up into tumours and vascular, paediatrics, hydrocephalus, deep brain stimulation for functional neurosurgery. So there's, there's a pretty wide range of that. We do spinal surgery and pretty much anything with a nerve in it. So you can do brain surgery of the wrist or brain surgery of the inguinal ligament, depending on uh, what the patient's problem is. So you can specialise in almost anything and it's the kind of specialty that has the big machines, the machines that go ping, a lot of technology, a lot of exciting imaging and also a lot of exciting targeted therapies and stuff like that coming through. Why did I choose my specialty? I chose my specialty basically uh, on the basis of meeting a brain tumour patient when I was an intern and thinking this patient is really sick. Somebody really needs to look after this person and I thought that that would be something that I'd like to do. It was a patient with a craniopharyngioma who had not only a surgical problem but a functional problem, an endocrine problem, a rehabilitation problem, an oncological problem and I thought this is the specialty that really brings all of those things together and lets you be a technician um, and a clever thinking doctor and a caring doctor and someone who looks after people long term with difficult illnesses and I thought this is this is the specialty to me. To cut is to cure. Well I think cure is a little bit of a kind of a shifting goalpost. Um, pretty much as drug free remission might be thought of as a cure. Um, you know the point of surgery in some cases is to cure and certainly I can cure patients with meningiomas and I can cure patients with canal stenosis in their spine and fix their leg pain and whatever else. Um, but there are also lots of patients I treat who I don't cure. But what I might cure is their hemiparesis or their speech difficulty or their terrible headache to give them quality of life until unfortunately they do die of whatever their disease process is. And so Cure is one way of looking at things, but I think you also need to look at the value that you can give someone for the time that they might have. And that's, that's a really important concept in neurosurgery because lots of our patients are terminal from the day we do their scan. But instead of dying in six weeks, unable to talk or move, we might be able to give them a year or two years or five years in a good functional capacity. But of course, it's also the specialty that has a lot of people in a terrible, wrecked, awful situation and you probably need to be able to deal with that. Well, that's a depressing way to win, isn't it? But other than that, you do a lot of really cool things and I also like to be economical, so I will stop there. <laughs> Okay, students, would they, they tell me here you're only the fourth Australian woman to qualify as a neurosurgeon. So they'd like to know why you think that is, and why aren't more women going into neurosurgery? Um, well, I think that was a general problem with surgery. Um, so I was the fourth woman in Australia and New Zealand, um, but there weren't very many female surgeons at all. Um, but one of the other hats I wear is being the uh, chair of the Women in Surgery Committee for the College of Surgeons. So when I qualified, about 3% of the fellowship was female, surgeons were female. That has made the enormous leap in the last 15 years or so of going to about 10% of the fellowship. But about 25% of 
surgical trainees are female. So the numbers continue to jump. And once we hit a critical mass where there's, people see more girls doing surgery, then I think that's going to change even more. Um, why don't they want to do it? Well, you know, it may be that we never have the same number of men and women doing surgery. And I, I'm not particularly fixated on that. Uh, my fixation is to make girls who want to do surgery able to do surgery because it's, it's a tough life. You know, it's a, it's a tough life. Um, but whether or not we'll find ways around that, I mean, the obstetricians have. Who would have thought that delivering babies would have become so family friendly? It's very difficult to find a, a, you know, a, a, a man training in obstetrics anymore. And that's because of the way female obstetricians practice now, in group practices, um, in you know, not being on call for their private patients 24-7, 365. And maybe surgeons will start to do that, and there are some practices that do that. And if uh, surgery becomes kind of more family friendly, both for women and men, we might find more parity. Okay, hang on, don't go away, Kate, because because you cut short your own time, I'm going to ask you one second question. Because I'd like to know the answer to this. How do people react when you tell them you are a neurosurgeon? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you. A funny story. So number one, if you're in a bar and you're trying to pick up a boy and you tell him you're a brain surgeon, he runs the other way. <laughs> runs away frightened or he says, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but I was on a cruise in Russia with my parents. And on the cruise was Phil. Phil was from the country, from Australia. And Phil liked to tell jokes. And Phil had been the loudest person on the tour. And we'd kind of been avoiding it, but me and my mum and dad were sitting on one side of the room in the boat, and, uh, and Phil said, Come on, ladies, come on, come over here. So Phil thought he'd make a big of a joke, and he walked over, we sat down, he walked over, and he said, Hi, I'm Phil, and I'm a brain surgeon. <laughs> so I shook his hand, and I said, Hi, I'm Kate, and I'm a brain surgeon. And he went, Gee, she's quick, isn't she? <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, we're going to ask the physicians to ask Kate a question of their own now. Thanks, Kate. I think that was a pretty uh, inspirational talk, actually, and I think it goes to the point we've all made, which is whatever specialty you choose, you know, you, you can end up making a great career for yourself. But I had a question uh, for, for you as a neurosurgeon. It was, um, have you ever known any, many of your patients, to leave your care on their own legs, happy and able to do a crossword? <laughs> Uh, yes, well, yes, yes. So, as I said, um, most of the meningioma patients do make it out the door. Um, and, in fact, I, I came back to be a, really a, an onco oncological surgeon. I came back and I said to my boss, you guys have known my boss, I came back and said to my boss, uh, yeah, you know, I'm trained as a very specialist brain, brain surgeon, very specialist brain tumor surgeon now, so I only want to do the brain tumor. He said, don't be ridiculous, you have to have some patients you can cure. <laughs> absolutely right. So I have a very satisfying practice in simple spine surgery, in the decompressive laminectomy for the little old lady with terrible sciatica who can't walk anymore. And those patients, as long as they could do the crossword on the way in, they could usually also do it on the